Welcome up! In this episode, we're doing a very simple exercise that will help everybody to start evaluating the political system of any country. Coming up! Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and hopefully by now you know the litany. I'm here to give you the tools and the language to understand and discuss politics. More informed citizens are better voters. This video is an introduction to a series of videos that I've done or I'm going to do about the differences between different political systems in different countries. I should have done this a while ago, but it is teaching that you realize how to make things simpler to understand. So let's try this simple. Pick a country, any country. Don't tell me which one. Okay. The question you need to answer is, is this a democracy? The answer is either yes or no. If it is not a democracy, then it is an authoritarian country, a dictatorship. You can be guided by these videos that I've done a while ago to see which characteristics the country you are studying displays. Are there free elections? Is there free press? Are basic human rights of citizens respected? These are all questions that can guide you in understanding if a country is a democracy or an autocracy. Of course, there are special forms of dictatorship and democracy, but the first initial distinction is this one. Moreover, once you've established that the country is, for instance, a democracy, you can also see how good of a democracy is, meaning that there are more democratic states than others as there are more authoritarian countries than others. In fact, the distinction between the two categories is ultimately a spectrum. You can check it in websites like Our World in Data. The Freedom House, which shows you how free is the country you're looking at. Or university rankings like the one of the University of Würzburg. There are many and most of them are good, especially if you are just trying to have an idea of how things are. Why do you need to do this as a first thing? Because you need to understand how power is repartitioned in the country you are trying to understand. Political systems tend to imitate each other for reputation or legitimacy. If you look at the formal nomenclature of a country, you will not understand how things really work. Take, for example, Belgium and Kazakhstan. One is a kingdom and the other a republic. So, if there is a king, you would be driven to say that Belgium is a dictatorship and Kazakhstan a democracy. Yet, as you already know, it is true the opposite. Based on this initial finding of yours, you know that you can take in consideration or disregard specific aspects of the political life of the country you are studying. Going back to Kazakhstan, that's an authoritarian country. Knowing this, we know that elections should not be taken seriously for the purpose of power repartition. They might tell me a few things about how the relationship among the elite members is evolving, but nothing more. At the opposite, in Belgium, elections are a real deal. Now I want to show you a bad example to further prove my point. Take this. This is just confusing and confused. For instance, communism is not a form of government, it's an ideology. In the example proposed, the Soviet Union is discussed as a communist state, which tells us that there was no free market, but it does not tell us how power was exercised in the country. Power was exercised as in any authoritarian country, even totalitarian under Stalin. If you have seen my video on totalitarianism, you know you can have both right-wing and left-wing dictators. Another example from the list, socialism is not a form of government. It is again an ideology. The examples proposed are liberal democracies, as Sweden that over the years had governments led by socialists which adopted left-wing policies. If you go to Sweden to ask people how it is living under socialism, they may look a bit confused. Another puzzling choice, democracy and monarchy are in different piles. But then the author says that the idea of monarchy has been diluted over the years because of constitutional changes. You can have monarchies that are democracies, as Belgium and the UK, or monarchies that are authoritarian states, as Saudi Arabia. But hey, also Sweden is a monarchy. Similarly, the US and Russia are both federal, 
a presidential and semi-presidential state, but one is a democracy and the other no. What is the problem here? The author mixes formal legal distinctions with actual differences on how power is exercised. In democracies, power is diffused and shared among different actors of a society. In autocracies or dictatorships, power is concentrated. After this, you can deal with the different numerous formal, legal and constitutional distinctions between countries. You can go on Wikipedia and learn more. Ask yourself, is it a monarchy or a republic? Is it a centralized or federal state? Its constitution is written or not? Has it a parliamentary, presidential or semi-presidential system? Does it have a proportional, majoritarian or mixed electoral system? All these things are important to know, but a secondary aspect if compared to the initial distinction between democracy and autocracy. I have discussed, or I will discuss, each of these questions in the videos that you've seen next to me, but I will link them also in the video description, as all the other things I've talked about in this video. Thank you for watching.